Alright then gang, so now we've seen how to build images, run images to start up a container and also how to stop containers as well. And all of this is fine how we're working with Docker so far but there is an improvement that we can make to this process and that's to do with something called layer caching. So remember we said that pretty much every line that we write inside the Docker file kind of represents a new layer in the image that we're creating because each line adds something new to the image, it adds a new layer onto it. So for the first layer, we pull in the node image. Then for the second layer, we specify the working directory. So that information is added as a layer to the final image. Then for the third layer, we copy the source files to it, again, adding something new to the image. Then we install the dependencies to the image, again, adding a new layer to it and so forth. So every line here represents adding a new layer to the image. And this is how images are built by layers being stacked one on top of the other. And each time we add a layer, we're essentially changing the image. So each time we add a new layer, we're basically giving Docker some extra work to do to add something to the image when we try to build it. And each time it does that, it takes some amount of time to do. For example, it might take a few seconds to download the parent image. It might take 20 seconds to install all the dependencies, etc. And we see this. If I just change this parent image to a different version of Node that we haven't already downloaded in the past, we'll see the whole process of building the image in the terminal again. So now I can build this by typing in the terminal docker build first of all, then the T flag to give this a tag or a name, and I'm going to call it my app2 to give it a different image name, and then after that a dot which is a relative path to the docker file. So if you hit enter now, it's going to walk through each of those steps to create a new layer on the image that we're building. And you can see already, as it's walking through these steps, it's taking some time in the terminal. It needs to download that initial parent image, then add on the working directory, then copy over the source files, install all the dependencies, etc. So it's adding each of those layers into the image in turn. So when it's done, if you scroll up, you can see that it took this many seconds right here to complete the build. And if we scroll through this, we can see each of the layers is added to the new image we created. So one out of four is the parent image, two out of four is the work directory, three out of four is the copying of the source files, and four out of four is installing the dependencies. So every time we make a new image, Docker has to go through these steps in order. Now imagine that we make a change to our app.js file. So for example, we could just change the JSON that's sent back to the client as a response to this request right here, something simple. And now since we've changed our code, we would need to make a new image because the image we just created was based on the old app.js before I made this change. And the image doesn't automatically update if I make a change to my code. Once an image is created, it's read only, it stays as it is. And if we make a change to anything in our application thereafter, we need to make a new image to pick that change up. So now let's do that. Let's run docker build, then hyphen T, and we'll call this my app three this time. And then after that, a dot at the end, which is the relative path to the Docker file. And if we hit enter now, it's going to go ahead and start building this new image. So when it's done that, if we scroll up a bit, we can see that this time it took a lot less time to do it. And this is because of the way that Docker caches our image layers. So every time Docker tries to build an image and walks through the different layers, it stores that image at each layer in the cache. So the first time we build this image after each layer, Docker took our image at that point in time and stored it in our cache. So we'd end up with a cached version of our image for every stage or every layer, right? Now, when we build an image again, before Docker starts the whole build process from scratch, it looks in our cache and it tries to find an image in the cache that it can use for the new image that we're creating so that the workload is reduced. In our case, we made a change to the app.js file. Now that affects this copy layer right here and therefore also everything after the copy layer as well that's built on top of it. But it doesn't affect the layers before it, the initial node parent image and also the working directory layer. So therefore, 
Docker will find in the cache the image we previously built up to and including this working directory layer. Because up until this point, the image is still the same, right? So it grabs that cached image with those two layers already added to it, and then it just runs through the subsequent layers and adds them on top to build our new image, which is why the second time around it was quicker to build. Because up until this point where we copy the source code, it's already done all of the work. And those two layers can just be pulled from the cache, which is quicker than downloading the parent image from scratch again, right? Now, if we take a look at the terminal, we can actually see here where it says cached next to the second layer. So we know it's pulling this from the cache and then everything after that, it's starting from scratch to add on the next layers. Now you might be thinking, why doesn't it grab the rest of the layers from the cache as well? Because the dependencies haven't changed and the last command hasn't changed, but the source code has. And so it has to run this copy layer again to get that updated source code, right? And then since every layer is built on top of the previous layer, if you like, the next layers after the layer that changes have to be added on from scratch as well, because it's not just single layers that are cached, it's the full image at every step that's cached, all right? So at the install layer, it's not just that install layer that's cached, it's the whole stack of layers up until that point that's cached. And since the layer before it changed, we need to add on the last two layers as well from scratch. However, that point still stands. It makes no sense to redo this npm install layer if we've already previously done that, right? And so there is a way that we can have this cached as well by running it before we copy over all the files. So first of all, let's just copy that run command and we'll paste it above the copy one. All right, so now the npm install would run before the source code is copied over, meaning that if in the future we changed the source code like app.js again, then now the first three layers could be pulled from the cache, including the npm install one, so it wouldn't have to run this again. But there is one problem with this. Currently, if the image is being built, then it will try to run the npm install before the package.json file gets copied over to it. So it won't actually know what it needs to install. That package.json file needs to be there before we run npm install. So the solution is to just copy over the package.json file as a layer in itself before we run npm install. So what I'm going to do is add a copy instruction just above this npm install one, and that's going to say copy package.json, and then after that, a dot. So this is now just gonna copy that one file over and place it inside the working directory, right? And then after that, the next layer is to run npm install and it can do that now. It's gonna copy then the rest of the files over in this next layer so that if we make a change to the app.js, then the first four layers now, including the npm install one, can be grabbed from the cache after the initial build, all right? So let me now try building this initially to make sure it all works. So in a terminal now, we can type docker build and then hyphen T and we're going to call this my app four and then after that a dot and then hit enter. So now that's built and we can see again that initially we get a cached version of the image to start with because we already did those first two layers previously and none of them have changed since the last time. And then it's built those extra layers on top of that now. All right, so what if now I make a change to the app.js file again? Let's do that. So what I'm gonna do is just again change the JSON data that we send back a little bit. And then I'm just gonna save the file. And then again, I wanna build this by typing down here in the terminal, docker build, and then hyphen T. And then after that, my app five, which is what I'm gonna call the image. And then finally a dot. And then when we do that, we should be able to see that we're gonna get cached images to begin with, or a cached image rather, to begin with, up until this copy layer right here. So now even the install layer is being pulled in from the cache, making everything much quicker. And that, my friends, is layer caching in a nutshell. And I am just gonna try running this last image in a container to make sure everything still works. So to do that, we can type docker run, then we're going to give this a name, so the name flag, which is going to be my app 5 underscore C. And then after that, we'll say hyphen P, 
to do our ports and it's going to be 4000 to 4000 and then finally the image name which is going to be my app 5 all right so when all that's done you can press enter to spin up this container and so now everything in the browser is working awesome